This is where Jimbo Fisher is one of the better offensive minds in the country. He's going to try to put his quarterback in favorable situations. He's a pressure hit. Delivered the strike and a touchdown. Quarterback was waiting for something. Didn't happen, but just takes off. Frank's in the open field. And the throw to a wide open is on a captain drive. Looking down the sideline. Solange intercepted by McFadden. And that could do it. Tonight, they'll never forget in the Seminole Nation. Number four, Florida State with a 22-point comeback, the largest in FSU history. The freshman, DeAndre Francois, may be a rookie, but he's looking like a vet. 33 of 52 for 419 pass yards, two TDs in his first career start, second most passing yards by a freshman in FSU history and pretty storied program there. Somebody at this desk is taking Bama over the field, but I won't name names. Could Florida State potentially be a threat? Oh, they are a threat. Mm. Let me tell you who Florida State is. I'll give you some details in a second, but I'm going to give you the big picture. Stephen Ann, I know you're a fight fan. Remember how Evander Holyfield used to take a shot? Evander Holyfield, great heavyweight champ. If I were a trainer in the other guy's corner, I would have told him, whatever you do, don't hurt Holyfield. Because other guy would be boxing well, whatever, hit Holyfield a shot, would stagger him. All of a sudden, he'd grit. His, you'd see his mouthpiece. Here comes hellfire. You had to take, you had to walk through hell if you hurt Holyfield. He had that kind of heart. That is the Florida State Seminoles. They have that kind of heart. They're the kind of team where early in the game, look, DeAndre Francois, the quarterback, looked like a deer in headlights in the first half. And it kept getting worse and worse. And it was Chad Kelly, Ole Miss quarterback, Chad Kelly, who looked like a professional NFL quarterback, who looked like the guy, wow, look at this guy. Look at the way the ball even comes out of his hand until the second half rolls around. Let me not even get ahead of myself. Before the second half even rolls around, Jimbo Fisher has a coming to God moment with these kids, is talking about, we're going to find out what you're made of right now. And the team responded. I don't know that it was so much adjustments that he made, but he got them buying in, believing, playing together, shaking off whatever it was that hit him in the first half where it looked like a blowout, a mismatch, and they go on a 30 nothing run and win the game. Look, Florida State is the kind of, look, if they, they can match up athletically with, any, with anyone, then the question becomes, what do they have? How much heart do they have in the moment of truth? They got the heart. They showed it last night. Uh, the only reason this game is an even, an even bigger deal is because of what Texas did to Notre Dame a couple days ago. That's such an amazing game. I, I think this one got a little overshadowed. But what, what Florida State just showed you is they are a threat to anyone, yes, even Alabama and Nick Saban. <sighs> Let me tell you something right now. I respect Florida State. Jimbo Fisher is a fantastic coach. I mean, the beat, I mean in his career there, He's been down at half seven times and has won all seven games. This man knows how to coach the game of football. And having said all of that and having nothing but profound respect for the Seminoles at Florida State and absolutely believing in Jimbo Fisher as a coach and Dalvin Kick as an absolute out Dalvin Cook as an absolute stud, I'm telling you right now, they are no shot against Alabama. Zero. That's right, I said it. They can't mess with Alabama. Here's the deal. If you want to sit up there and make an argument on behalf of Florida State, here's your argument. Other than Fish and Cook, you've got the fact that you really got a weak schedule. I mean, you get through Clemson, that's really your only tough game. Whereas Alabama's got Mississippi and LSU and Arkansas and Tennessee and Auburn, you know, every, you know, at the end of the season. You've got that hellacious oh, schedule. So I'm glad you come around to my way of thinking. No, 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 no. I'm not saying at all that Alabama is going to lose. I'm telling, I'm still taking them not to feel like some folks I know. <laughs> Here's the reality, though. In the end, you got to understand something. Football's a meat and potatoes game. Yeah. You know, where's the beef? And we all know where the beef is in college football. It's in Tuscaloosa. It's in Alabama. That's good. Florida State's offensive line can't mess with these brothers. They can't do anything about it. Dalvin Cook ain't going to run for 138 yards like he did last night. Uh, it's not going to happen. He didn't really run for 138 last night. I understand that. 138 No, 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 no. That, that, that's true. That's true. I'm sorry. I was thinking of Damian Harris because yeah. he ran for 138 yards. You're absolutely right about that. Dalvin Cook caught. Yeah, he caught, he caught he, 100 he yards. He was basically no, 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 a fever last night. I appreciate the correction because I was thinking about Damian Harris instead of Dalvin Cook. But it doesn't matter. I'm telling you right now, if you're the Florida State Seminoles, you, you got Jesus Wilson and, 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 and some dude, Ru 
Rudolph and Cook was catching receptions. That ain't going to work against Alabama. You know, this kid that's quarterback is Francois. Okay, good, good luck with that. It was very, very <laughs> impressive. Oh, he's a bad boy, over 400 yards passing. You know, it was Ole Miss, but the bottom line, I give respect where respect is due. They can play. The problem is when you talk about going up against Alabama, you got Everett, you got Fitzpatrick, you've got Marlon Humphreys in the crew. I mean, these are some rough riders. And did you see Alabama's defense? Alabama's defense looks almost as good as it looked in 2011 when they won a national championship. These brothers are no joke. Florida State is good. I get all that. I understand it. A lot of teams are good. But I'm thinking if you want to beat Alabama, you got to be the superstar caliber dude, the likes of Deshaun Watson, to even have a chance. And I can't see it. Like, for example, I feel so sorry for LSU because, you know, they lost the game over the weekend, right? Everybody talking about what the hell is going on with Les Miles. You just keep giving the ball to Leonard Fournette. No innovation whatsoever. They're getting on him. Les Miles could be in a little bit of trouble. But you know what the real problem is? This quarterback, Brandon Harris. I mean, that dude can't get it done. The fact that he's behind center sure assures you that Alabama has absolutely nothing to worry about. you got to be an athletic freak and a stud to even have a chance. And even then, your offensive line has got to show up against those meat and potato boys from, from Alabama. And by the way, I didn't even get to Alabama's offense offensive line and how they're going to be able to run the football because of those meat and potato dudes. And you might have the skill set, but they're too small. They're too soft. They're too weak. I'm talking about all of them. I'm talking about everybody. They didn't, everybody. They didn't show me soft yesterday. Not soft. They <laughs> looked they look overmatched in the first half, and then they went on a 30-0 run. That was against Ole Miss. You're I'm, over, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. Was Nick Saban on another sideline? I mean, was that, was that, was that Alabama's overrated. defense? Did that? This is, this is what happens, too. It happens in all sports. When blowouts and great offensive teams, <clears throat> obviously Alabama can also play defense, but you're overestimating them at this moment because Alabama, who always looks really good, Saban does a great job getting them ready for, for week one, against an overrated USC squad. They absolutely looked invincible. It's very early in the season, and I would liken them last year, though their schedule is much tougher. As I mentioned the other day, as you mentioned today, Alabama, much tougher schedule than LSU or Clemson. But they're kind of the calves last year, you know, in the sense that you know they're going to be there in the end. The question is, when the dust settles, who is going to be in the other corner? Is it going to be Clemson or Florida State? We're going to find out October 29th. Listen. They play each other. The winner of that game oh, gonna is be... going to be, in my estimation, at the very would... least, the greatest threat to Alabama or maybe the favorites to win the I would thing. say this. For Florida State, one last night, I got a text from my man Chris Carter, the Hall of Fame wide receiver extraordinaire, raving about this kid, Derwin James. Talk about this dude, Ed Reed, Ronnie Lott type dude, top five picking Stephen A. This dude is special. I get all that. I understand. I understand that Alabama's quarterback, regardless of Jalen Hurts, we'll see what he does. No, Blake he Barnett, we'll see what he does. I mean, he looks all right, but he looked like Francois. I mean, he looked like him. But, but bottom line is he's got some skills. But the point that I'm trying to make to y'all is when you got meat and potato dudes in front of you on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively, People get soft. It's not that they are soft. They get softened up. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm, that, that's the problem I got with the Florida States of the world and all of these other they teams. They did the opposite. Listen, listen, listen. They were getting beaten on the line of scrimmage. Not, not, they were getting no, no, whooped no, no, on the line of scrimmage. They did the opposite of folding. They didn't get soft no, 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 no. You're, 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 you're talking, but you're not hearing me. I'm saying to you, I don't give a damn what they did last night. It wasn't against Alabama. Now, the SEC overall, the SEC is a little bit shaky this year. You got Ole Miss, you got Mississippi, you got LSU. I mean, they don't look that Tennessee struggling against Appalachian State. I mean, come on now. I mean, the SEC is looking a bit shaky right now, but not Alabama. Alabama is in another stratosphere. Everybody needs to accept that. And Nick Saban is absolutely right. See, this is one thing. They went 52 to 6. What does Nick Saban do? He comes out, he's complaining about them. Why? Because I'm not going to let you rest on your laurels. I, I know. You know what that. that said to me? You know what that said to me? He's scared because he knows how dominant they are and he knows how dominant they know they are. So the only people that can beat Alabama is Alabama. If Look, you don't beat yourself, you, you give, will coast to the national title. You, coast to the you national give title. Nick Saban, who can do who can win a championship without a top quarterback, a top quarterback, and that's what Jalen Hurts looked like week one. Look out. 
But no, that no, no. still, that just makes them the You got Francois. That just you makes them. Francois. That just, you got Francois. You've got Watson. Just, why you bringing up, why you bringing up Jalen Hurts for? What you bringing him up for? Meat potatoes, do you want me to say Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me mix in some vegetables into your diet, Stephen A. A little salad. Mix it in. Something, right? If you, they're the odds-on favorite. We agree with that. But odds-on still makes you the underdog against the field, even if you think their odds improve. They were 6-1 to one to start the season. They just beat SC, a, a top-12 top recruiting class, although they've underachieved in recent years, 53-6. to six, and, then, and then they have a quarterback, and coach comes out and says that they haven't even performed well. Oh, my God, they're amazing. You want to improve the odds to 4-1? to one? That still means they're a 4-1 to one underdog against the field, Stephen A. They're still the underdog. It's a long shot, in fact. Listen. It was them against the field last year. It was a little hiccup against Mississippi. I understand it was early in the season. What happened then? Roll Tide. And now, here they are. We're not going to allow you to sleep on yourselves now because you might jeopardize the national championship. What are we going to say? Roll Tide. You're underestimating. It, uh, in a full, contact, contact, in a full am, contact sport, you I are am underestimating heart. Football, it's oh, not, it's yes not basketball, I am. it's I'm not snoring on it. It I'm a, not sleeping, I'm it, snoring on that. Football is different. Please. The kind but, of heart look, I saw look. from FSU last night is look. the kind of heart, if you have athletes, okay. which they do, mm -hmm. that can match up with anyone. Listen, maybe, you know what, I must confess, I do have a confession to make. There is a little something that I hold against FSU, and I feel obligated to admit that. Now, a couple of years ago, I decided I'm going to go out to L.A. You know, it was in Vegas. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stroll on over to L.A. for New Year's Eve, enjoy myself, have a good time. It was a Rose Bowl. I mean, I'm sorry, it was in Pasadena, uh -huh. okay? And they had a national championship playoff game, you know, semifinals. Yeah. It was Oregon and Marcus Mariota versus FSU and Jameis Winston. It might, I will admit that it, it might be a little something in me that's holding something against them because that was one of the worst experiences I've ever had. They got annihilated. They got trolloped. They got embarrassed. And I know Jim Fisher to be a great coach, but damn, they got their butts whipped. And I'm just saying to myself, I'm sat up there looking, I'm like, damn. This Ohio State-Alabama game in New Orleans, that should have been a national championship game. It would have been better. Maybe a little bit of something there, but in the end, it just restores my belief that when you go with Alabama, particularly against somebody like FSU, eventually they will be worn By the down. Way, to say and that nothing, is what I believe that's going to happen. nothing of Clemson, and we'll see with Clemson, but if they beat FSU in October, Clemson, who just played them, who played them tight in a close shootout, who had an inexperienced Francois quarterback. Francois and Deshaun Watson. Who had Francois and Deshaun, Deshaun, Deshaun Watson. Watson. That's right. Who had an inexperienced quarterback who now has an extremely experienced quarterback because he actually has experience in a national title game mm -hmm. who Nick Saban's identified as the best player in college so, football. So, who, you assume so, they've made progress. We're just talking about FSU versus Alabama, let alone Clemson. Even if you like look, Clemson look, to beat look, FSU, I got, then maybe you like I got to respect. I got to respect Clemson and my man Dabo, but I still think they would lose. But don't talk to me about no Florida State yet. How can you? Florida I don't State. care. I don't care what they did against Ole Miss. State. Ole Miss. You, like like Ole Miss isn't good. No, no, they, well, they are. Speaking of which, like we will have a good test September seventeenth because it's Bama Ole Miss to see how those two line up potentially sure. playing. Oh, that's a win. That's a win for Alabama. Goodbye. Win.